Hey, praise the Lord. It's Brother Clinton. Welcome to my office once again, and welcome back to the Word Prophet channel. This is a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth as Jesus Christ commanded. You know, God commanded us by the mouth of Jeremiah to go back to the old paths. And that's what this ministry is for. That's what the purpose of this ministry is for, to bring us back to the Word of God, to, to doing things according to the Word of God and not according to the traditions of men which contradict it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And if we will do that, then we will be able to enter into the kingdom of the living God. Um, if we will follow after the traditions of men, then we will not enter the kingdom of God. And as Jesus said, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, so that, that they also may receive you into everlasting habitations. In other words, if, if you uh, want to follow after the traditions of men, you might as well make yourselves good friends of them. If peradventure they might be able to provide for you a kingdom to enter into, um, because you're not going to enter into the kingdom of God following after the traditions of men. That said, uh, I hope that the title of this video has brought you to it, and I want to talk to you uh, a little bit about the concept of marriage. There are two things, at least two things in this world that are called marriage, and most people think that they're both the same thing because they generally both happen at the same time, but they're not the same thing at all, and that's what I want to talk to you about. There is already a video on this channel and in this playlist called Marriage and Marriage, The Difference Between the Two. And I hope that you'll check that out. It'll, it will likely go into a little bit more detail that I'm about to go into here. I just want to touch on this briefly. But there are several things that... Let me just back up a little bit. There are many people who, when a Christian man and a Christian woman marry one another, there are many people that will say to them, well, you're not legally married because you didn't go to you know, the state and get a marriage license and you didn't have a legal wedding with a legal representative of the state saying by, by the power of the state of you know whatever state of California vested in me I now pronounce you man and wife and because you didn't have that people think that you're not legally married okay this is a is a real problem was well, it's, it's a real problem for them it's not a problem for us and when I say them I'm talking about people that are outside of the covenant of God and when I say us, I'm talking about those of us who are Christians, those of us who serve the Lord Jesus Christ. It's a problem for them because it makes them very angry. Uh, it's not a problem for us. And here's the thing. There are many things that are legal, but that are not lawful. And I'm going to spend a couple of minutes talking to you about the difference between legal and lawful. You see, the people of this world have been brainwashed into thinking that legal and lawful are the same thing. And you and I, if we're, we were, you know, I'm talking to you in the year 2017, 57, 78, we were born into slavery. We were born into a, 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 a virtual system of deception that we, it, it isn't that we were, you know, we grew up and then somebody came to us and deceived us. We were born into this system of slavery. We were born believing that we needed a social security card, that we needed a, if you're in the USSA, in other countries it's called something different, but it's the same thing. Every country that's run by a central bank, it's the same system. Okay, We were born um, into this world being taught from, our, from the time that we entered into this world, we need good credit, we need to get a good education, and we need a job. Okay, So that we can be a cog in a wheel. We weren't taught that we can be free that we can create a business, that we can actually own a piece of land, that we can actually start a business, whatever we want to do, without asking anybody's permission, without paying for it. And we weren't taught that we have the right to marry a person. If you're a man, you have a right to marry a woman. If you're a woman, you have the right to marry a man, whichever person you choose, uh, without uh, petitioning anybody for a license or permission to do so. From the foundation of the world, people were marrying one another. Men and women were marrying one another without anybody's permission, without the permission of any state government, without a license from anybody, and without a state-ordained minister at their wedding ceremony. For, for centuries, people did that. And nobody ever came to them and said, well, you're not legally married. But today, people come to you, if, you marry, if you're a man and you marry a woman, they'll, according to the Word of God, they'll come to you and they say, well, you're not legally married. And the reason that they say that is because they're brainwashed into slavery. They, don't under, they have no concept of the fact that it is possible for a person to live 
free and that it, it is possible for a person to live, survive, and function without the oversight of the communist state government that, would, that we were programmed to be assimilated into from our youth. And in these days, it's, it's virtually impossible in the mind of anyone to imagine that they could actually marry someone without a marriage license. But you see, it is. Because you don't need a license to marry anybody. The Bible says in the beginning that God created man, male and female. And for this reason shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Did Adam have a marriage license? No, certainly not. Was there a state minister at his wedding with Eve? Well, that said, by the power invested in me by the state of you know, Eden, I, I hereby pronounce you man and wife? No, of course not. There was nothing like that. Did they give one another rings to put on their finger? No, of course not. That's a whole different story. Uh, but of course not. You see, those things have nothing to do with the covenant that a man and a woman have between them and God when they marry one another. And here's the thing. The, I began this video by saying there are two different things that are called marriage in this world. Okay? At least two different things that are called marriage. You know, marriage is a generic word. It just basically means the joining of two or more things together. That's what the word marriage means. So there are at least two things that are called marriage in this world that people think are the same, and they're not. And one of them is a covenant that, that a man enters into with a woman before God, whereby they become one flesh. Okay? A man that is free to marry and a woman that is free to marry. And when I say this, I mean that they're not married to other people at the time. And they come together in a covenant of marriage. The man makes a vow to the woman. She accepts or makes a vow back to him. And then he takes her into the marriage bed. And they consummate the vows that they've made with sexual union. That makes a man and his wife one flesh. Okay? There's another thing that is called marriage in this world, which has absolutely nothing to do with what I just described. It is a contract, not a covenant. Okay, do you understand the difference between a covenant and a contract? A covenant is a blood covenant whereby two people, a man and a woman, become one flesh for life. A contract is, is something whereby two persons, doesn't matter what gender they are, can come into a legal agreement with a state of corporation and thereby they are considered by that state of corporation to be married or joined together. That's, it's also sometimes called a civil union. All right? That's what it is. It doesn't make a man and a woman one flesh. It doesn't make anybody one flesh with anybody else. All it does is bring people into a contract, a legally binding contract with a corporation, whether it be the state of California, the state of Arizona, the state of you know, Florida, whatever state, it is, or if you're in another country, you know, whatever state or, or district you live in or are a part of that you have contracted with, it makes you a, a party in a three-party contract whereby the state that tricked you into the contract becomes the principal party, which they didn't tell you when you signed the contract, which means that they have jurisdiction, or it, I should say, has jurisdiction over you your spouse, your children, your money, your house, your property, and everything that pertains to the marriage contract, you see? And it's a fraudulent contract, and I, the reason I say it's a fraudulent contract is because the terms of that contract are not disclosed to you before you sign it, even after you sign it. They're not disclosed to you. The terms of this contract probably have never been disclosed to you until this moment as you're watching this video. Um, but the people who invented those contracts know this, and that's why they have tricked you into it, and that's why there are, they make a lot of money on divorce lawyers, and that's why judges can grant a divorce, and judges can say to this person, you have to give the, the kids to this person, and you have to give this much money to that person. See, because the judge is an agent of the state, and the state is that corporation that doesn't really exist except when people acknowledge it, which is represented by criminals who have tricked you into a contract with their corporation so that they now own you. They own all your assets. They own your children. Your children are wards of the state. If you have a birth certificate for your children and if you have a marriage license for your marriage, then your children are wards of the state. That's why they can force your children to go to public school. That's why they can force your children to take vaccinations. And that's why they can take your children with armed thugs out of your house 
legally if they don't like the way that you're raising your children or the, the things that you're teaching your children because your children are wards of the state because you have been tricked into a contract that has been called marriage for the specific reason of deceiving you into thinking that it's the same thing as the marriage that is described in the Bible, a covenant between a man and a woman whereby they become one flesh. And it's not that at all. It's not that at all. It has nothing to do with that. The only thing that the contract called marriage has to do with the covenant called marriage is that people have been tricked into doing both of these things at the same time. So they imagine, therefore, that they are the same thing, and they are not. I just want to take a minute to, just, to, to talk to you about legal and lawful, okay, before I uh, culminate the, the message in this video. Legal and lawful are two different words that mean two completely different things. Okay? They're not the same at all. The word legal is not found in the Holy Bible. It's not found in the scripture anywhere. The word legal is not in the scripture anywhere. The word lawful is in the scripture. It's in the scripture 39 times. Let me just share with you a couple of examples. Um, I have here uh, Isaiah 49, 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? Lawful. Okay. There are some captives who are lawfully captive because they are, they, they've sinned and they've gone into captivity. Okay. We might call that prison today. Okay. And there are some people in prison who are there for legal reasons, not lawful reasons, which means that they haven't broken any law, but they have broken a statute of the corporation that owns the prison system, and therefore they're there. For instance, uh, and I'm not condoning the use of drugs at all, but um, the, the, the possession of drugs is not a crime. Okay. The definition of a crime is when you damage someone or their property. That's a crime. If you damage your neighbor or his property, then you're committing a crime. If you buy drugs and you possess drugs, that's a sin against the Lord, and, and you're not going to enter into the kingdom of God with drugs in your house or in your possession or in your body, because that's witchcraft, but it's not a crime against men, and it is not something that constitutes punishment. So the same thing, you know, if you if you're, get a speeding ticket, okay? If a, if a police officer gives you a speeding ticket, you have not committed a crime. You have committed a violation against the code of the corporation that you have contracted with and therefore their policy says that you're only allowed to go a certain speed and you have um, consented to be a part of that corporation when you present your driver's license to the police officer you identify yourself as a slave to that corporation and therefore he you give him the right to give you a speeding ticket and charge you money for something that isn't a crime you see so lawful and legal are two different things that which is lawful is that which is according to the law of God or some people call it the universal law and we refer to it basically as the Ten Commandments although there are other commandments besides those in the Word of God but that's kind of the the, the crux of the matter the Ten Commandments if you love your neighbor as yourself then you're not going to steal from your neighbor you're not going to covet your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's property you're not going to um, uh, bear false witness against your neighbor you're not going to kill. You're not going to do any of the things that God commanded not to do if you walk in love. And so the things that are lawful are the things that you obey that are that have been given to us by God not to violate the, the well-being of your neighbor. Okay, That's lawful. Legal is another thing altogether. Legal is a term that refers to the statutes and ordinances of the corporations that have been formed by the banking cartel over the people of this world. Now, some of, the, some of the, the legal statutes that they have formed are according to the law, and some of them are not according to the law. When I say the law, I'm talking about the universal law, the law of God. All right? And this isn't going to be a whole you know, detailed teaching about this. If you're interested in teachings about this, write to me, and I'll be happy to refer you to, to other men who are far more educated in these matters who can break down these things for you. But there's a different difference between legal and lawful. You see, it is not unlawful for a man to take a wife without a license. There is no provision in the, in the law of God anywhere that says that a man or a woman needs a license from anybody to get married. There's also no law in the law of God that says that you have to submit to the creation of a certificate of live birth for your child and submit it to the state government. There's no law that says you have to do that. Okay. There's no law that says you have to do that. And in fact, doing that is very harmful to your children and to you. <clears throat> so, having said that, having said these things, 
The word lawful is in the scripture many times, 39 times. The word legal is not, because legal is an invention of men. Legal pertains to a set of statutes that men have created in order to enslave and control the population and create what we call the new world order. That's what legal is all about. Right? There are several things that are considered legal that are not lawful. For instance, it's considered legal in many places for sodomites to marry one another or pretend they're married to one another. And again, when I say marriage, in this context, I'm talking about the contract that is called marriage by the state where two persons become a legal contract, a binding contract with the state. That's not the same thing as a marriage that God has ordained in his word, whereby a man and a woman become one flesh. You see? So in some places it's, it's considered legal for sodomites to pretend that they're married to one another, to have a marriage contract or a civil union contract. Okay, that's not lawful, but it is legal. All right? It's legal in many places for doctors to, uh, to strap a woman down to a table who's a pregnant woman and rip the child out of her womb and cut it in pieces and give it to laboratories or give it to Satanists so they can you know, drink the blood or whatever and uh, or various other organizations, it's, it's a sacrifice to Baal, and it's legal in many places, but it is not lawful. It is a crime, and those who commit this crime will stand before God and give account for it. You see? It is legal in many places for a man to divorce his wife so he can marry another wife. Okay? That's not lawful. It's legal in many places for a woman to divorce her husband and marry another man while her husband is still living. That's legal, but it's not lawful. You see, so there's a definite difference between legal and lawful. Legal pertains to the world that is governed by Satan. He is the god of this world. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 states that Satan is the god of this world. And the god of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. And so lawful is that which pertains to the law of God. You do not need permission from anybody to marry a wife. If you're a man, you don't need anybody's permission to marry a wife. You don't need a state minister to say, by the authority vested in me by the state of so-and-so, I hereby pronounce you man and wife. You don't need that to make you one flesh with your wife, to marry a wife lawfully before God and men. You don't need that. If you desire legal proof of your marriage to your wife, then you can invite two witnesses when you make your vows to your wife to a wedding ceremony, and you and they can sign a certificate that you print up on your own, not a certificate that you, not a license from the state, and not a certificate that you get from the state and submit to the state, a certificate that you print up and keep on your own, you sign it, your wife signs it, the two witnesses sign it, you take it to a notary public, he signs it and stamps it, and you keep it in your family Bible. That is legal proof of your marriage. And if you ever have to go into a court of the legal system and they want to know that you're married, you can present that document to them and that is legal proof that you're married and you don't have a license from anybody because you don't need a license from anybody. You do not need a license to get married. And people have been so brainwashed in these last days that they think, they imagine that because you don't have this legal process bringing you and your wife into a, a, a contract, a fraudulent contract with the state. They imagine that if you don't have that, that you're not legally married. You see? Because they've been so blinded and, and brainwashed by the system that we were all raised up in. And I'm not saying this against them to, to slander them and, or to call them stupid or anything, because they're not stupid. You and I believed in the same things. We were all, all of us were raised up in this world, being taught lies from the very beginning, living in a virtual reality. And being taught from the very beginning that there is no such thing as freedom and that we have to become slaves to the system. But at the same time, they call our slavery freedom. And they have Independence Day <laughs> every July 4th to celebrate their total and complete dependence upon the, 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 the crown of Britain. But anyway, I digress from that. Um, the, the, the point in this video is to make known to you the difference between legal and lawful and the fact that a man who takes a woman, makes a vow to her, and she reciprocates that vow, and then he takes her into the marriage bed to know her carnally. That is what makes a man and a woman married.
That's what makes them one flesh. If you want to have a wedding ceremony, that's a wonderful thing. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Right? It's the, the act of marrying a woman is when a man takes a woman, makes a vow to her, she reciprocates, and then he takes her to the marriage bed and knows her carnally. They are one flesh for life. Period. It doesn't matter if they have a marriage contract with the state or not. That has nothing to do with the fact that they are married to one another, lawfully and legally, before God and men. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May this message be a blessing to many, so that you can come out from the darkness and discover that you can actually step out of that cell and look at the sun, the Son of God, the sunlight, and be delivered from the power of the deception that, is, that, has been, that has been perpetrated upon you since your birth, basically since your birth, and since mine too. So may this message be a blessing to you, and um, I'm out for now. This is Brother Clinton. Peace to you, those of you who love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen.